Hi guys, let's do this. Let me turn my camera down a little bit so you can see my lovely face. How are you all doing? So who we got here? We've got Colt here, uh, Amok, Misty G, Foroy, uh, Andy as well. Hi guys. So I'm going to start splitting these Thursday streams into two distinct things. We're going to have uh, this kind of stream, which is a uh, uh, kind of coding tutorials really more than anything else. So I'm calling them Let's Code 6502 and we'll have the um, the dissect ones as well um, Where I will actually go back and dissect a couple of games. I I realized the other day I am missing it a little bit even though I get annoyed with it sometimes when I, I can't um, Can't get clean versions of the games, but as long as I prepare ahead of time I should be all right um, But let's I, I wanted to do these Let's Code uh, things as kind of standalone videos so they'll they'll fit well onto YouTube I think where uh, people are going to find these videos and um, there's a lot of questions I get asked about the same things that crop up so this is going to be the place for those things so tonight we're going to look at addressing modes um, in 6502 um, obviously with a, a view to this being on the Commodore on the 6510 uh, but 6502 is the language um, and we'll also look at how you can use kick assembler to kind of enhance uh, those things I think there's been a bit of confusion over um, how you can use calculations uh, you should be able to get good versions from the no intro sets I mean you know you don't know there's a way to find them uh, yes, that's a good point. I do need to look into that a little bit more. I did download one of the no intro sets not long ago, so um, I'll, next time I do a game, I'll, I'll look into those. Hi, Busley, welcome to the stream. Uh, oh, Hayes will join at some point, I'm sure. I think the important thing is that there is a video that he can he can look into and, uh, and discover this stuff. So, hi, Steps, welcome to the stream. So, um, addressing modes, okay, so what I want to do is go through the, how many of these, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 addressing modes. Some of them will be really quick to do, some of them will be copies of the previous one, for instance, index with X and index with Y are going to be pretty much the same. Um, but we'll we'll go through and we'll we'll start with the easy ones and we'll work work our way up and I'll show you how to think about it when you're when you're doing the calculations with the numbers in Kick Assembler and we'll look at some of the directives that you can use in Kick Assembler um, and hopefully this will give a better understanding for those who are confused um, about the difference between immediate mode and uh, absolute mode, for instance, and and what you can and can't do with those numbers uh, and with the with the uh, the addressing modes in general so let's start with the first one so the first one is called implied mode and implied mode um, they're all one byte uh, the reason it's called implied mode is because it's simply uh, an instruction with no operand it's an opcode with no operand so the opcode is the three letter code we see here um, and the operand would be any additional parameters that you pass to it. So this music, is the music too loud guys? Because it seems quite loud to me. Maybe I just need to turn my music down a little bit. Thanks for the host Andy. Just turn my speakers down a little bit, there you go. I discovered my speakers, the reason why I've been missing alerts. <laughs> oh no, the shimmer video. Thanks for the resub, Andy. Five months. Cool. Uh, value for money every time. Yeah. If only to see me do the, the shimmer. <laughs> Music's fine. Okay, good. It's probably just my speakers. I discovered my speakers have got like a auto off function. Um, and I think that's why I've been missing alerts. And I can't find a way to turn off the auto off, so it's a bit annoying. Um, Hey, Hayes is here. Hi, Hayes. Um, yeah, so 
implied mode. So implied mode is the simplest introduction. It's a single byte. Um, we've got quite a few instructions there, so I'll try and list them all here and quickly explain what they do. Um, so there's the, the the processor flag sets and uh, sets and clears. So this is the carry flag. This just sets the processor carry. So there is a, a processor state. If we look in the debugger, uh, you can see it up here. This this block here. Hang on. This block at the top here is our processor flags. Now some of them you can set um, directly, some of them are set as a result of operations. But there's a whole chunk of implied mode um, instructions that set these. I'll show you which ones they are. I'm feeling okay, thanks Hayes. I'm I'm not still not great. I'm having a lot of issues with my my stomach at the moment. Uh, kind of <laughs> kind of similar to what um, uh, Dom Domadags is going through. I mean, I don't know exactly what he's going through, but it was kind of funny when he mentioned it. I was thinking, yeah, I'm having kind of bad problems as well. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling not feeling too bad today actually. Uh, but it has kind of knacked me out the past couple of two weeks actually so these implied mode um, instructions no no parameters whatsoever the the operation is implied so this clears the carry flag sets the carry bit uh, there's also a decimal mode which you can clear and you can set uh, there's also what's the other one uh, the interrupt flag as well So with the interrupt flag cleared, interrupts can work. With this interrupt flag set, interrupts will not work. Um, and then the one that doesn't have a set is the overflow. You can set the uh, sorry, you can clear the overflow flag, but you can't uh, you can't set it. Overflow is something um, uh, we should probably cover that in in a future stream. Maybe we'll do. Um, a, a, another one of these Let's Code 6502 streams on on kind of um, op addition and subtraction operations and then we'll, I can explain that in a little bit more detail. I'm not going to go into it now because it's uh, it's not necessary for what we're doing. So those are the flag sets. Um, then as Step says there is the NOP uh, instruction. Um, this just stands for no operation and it's just a way of wasting two cycles. Um, did I miss you saying what implied mode is? Uh, implied mode is uh, basically any instruction that just has um, the three letter op code and no parameters after it. Uh, it means implied because um, the, the operation of that op code is completely applied, so uh, completely implied. There's no additional information it needs. Um, there's also the return operations. So there's return from subroutine and return from interrupt. Um, we've gone over how what what they actually do. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about those now. Um, there is uh, actually I'm going to put one other one up here. There is the break instruction. Um, Which is just going to cause your your program to uh, break its flow and, and um, actually cause it to crash most of the time. So you'll probably never use that anyway. Um, I think it does cause a jam. Actually, I think that's what it does. Then there's the um, the transfer instructions. So if you need to transfer things to and from the accumulator, you've got a uh, transfer commits to X. I'm going to put these in here. Just call it transfer and back again from X to the accumulator. You've got the same for Y as well. Um, you've also got one that we haven't really touched on. I think we did it a little bit when we were looking at doing stable interrupts, um, but we haven't done anything else on it um, since not really explained it. <laughs> Thanks Hayes. Thanks for the resub. Five months as well. Awesome. 
Shalom really want me. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so the the other transfer is, so I'm, I've got a reference here because I want, do want to make sure I cover everything, um, is transfer the stack pointer to X and transfer X to the stack pointer. Um, so the stack pointer, just to go back to the debugger, the stack pointer is this value here, and this just points to where the um, the current, oh, I don't know why I've reset it, I should probably put that back, um, just points to where in the stack the, the processor is currently pointing. Um, the stack runs from 0100 to 01FF, uh, so the stack is currently pointing to here, uh, sorry, to here. Uh, break into electric boogaloo. <laughs> electric boogaloo. Um, so they're the transfer instructions. Um, then you've got the increment instructions as well. So you've got um, increase x, increase y, and the decrement instructions. I'm going to put by one because this will only ever increase them by one. Um, decrease x and decrease y. Um, there isn't the same thing for the accumulator. The accumulator uses the add and the subtract. Um, uh, actually, I'm going to rename this file to implied. I'm going to do a different file for each one within reason. Um, so that's decrease and then we've also got <laughs> it's a sub fest today. Thanks for the sub spec humster. Uh, the bin instruction. You mean the bit instruction? I don't think there is a bin instruction. If there is, I've never used it. I think you mean bit. I will when we get to the bit instruction. I will explain that because um, it is kind of a. It is an is. It's an odd. It is an odd one, but it's very useful. Um, okay, so that's the decrements, and we've also got the oh, the push and pull commands. So with the stack, you can push the accumulator onto the stack, and the opposite is to pull the accumulator from the stack. So when you push something onto the stack, it will increase the stack pointer. Well, actually, it will decrease the stack pointer value. The stack works from the top down, so the stack starts at FF and works its way down towards zero. Uh, and the pull pull accumulator will pull the value off. So if you push a value onto the stack, it looks at the stack pointer, finds the place in the stack, pushes the accumulator value onto it, and decreases the value of the stack pointer. Then when you pull, it will pull that value back off the stack and increase the stack pointer. Um, there is also uh, push the processor stack onto uh, the processor state status. Uh, as I said, we've got these values here. If you wanted to remember all of these and restore them later, you can push them onto the stack and then you can pull them again later from the stack. So that's the push instructions. And what am I missing? Definitely. Oh, the okay. And then there's the the logical instructions as well. So, um, so you've got arithmetic shift left uh, and logical shift right. And what these will do is they will shift all the bits in in about in the accumulator. This is always on the accumulator when you use these commands as implied mode. They do have other modes, um, but in implied mode, um, they only apply on the accumulator. appear to have a lot of latency. Let me just check on my video. So I did notice I was dropping a lot of streams before, uh, a lot of frames before. Uh, latency, uh, latency is not too bad. It says six seconds here. So maybe it's just you. Um, 
the one thing this will do when you shift to the left or to the right, if whatever bit is cut off the end, whichever bit is shifted off, um, goes into the carry flag. So if you've got um, this value and you shift it to the left, you will end up with this value, but the one that we shifted out, this, this extra one here, ends up in the carry flag. Uh, likewise, if it was a zero there, you'd end up with zero in the carry flag. Uh, and the same if you shift to the uh, to the right as well, you you will whichever bit is on this side will end up in the carry flag. Um, and then the final two are uh, roll and ro uh, rol, uh, which is uh, roll uh, left. Accumulator and roll right accumulator, and these work exactly the same as the uh, well, almost the same as the the shift left and right. They do the shift, but what they also do is they take the current value in the curry flag and they shift it into the space. So if you imagine our carry flag here is is set to one, and the value we've got is is this. If we shift this. Oh wow, I'm 150 emotes. Wow, thank you for the bits, Emma. That's that's far too generous. I've got four from you there. Thank you very much. I'm gonna thank you for that. I don't know what I've got. Cool, awesome. I've got half of something and half of something else. Very cool. Thank you very much, Emma. Very very kind of you. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought now. Yeah, okay, so if you've got a carry flag set to 1, and this is the, the, the binary string that you've got, and you roll it to the left, this whole thing gets shifted to the left, so like this. Um, this would be your value, but the carry flag gets put in the end here, and this value ends up in the carry flag. If you were to go the other way and you were to shift right, this would all get shifted along like so. This value gets dropped off. This value goes in this space here. This value goes in the carry flag. Um, I think when we do, I, I might do one on um, on uh, logical operations because there's a lot of good things you can do with logical operations, um, and you will use them continually throughout your code. Um, and and these are really handy for doing kind of. Uh, Multiplications and divisions by powers of two, and um, roll and raw are kind of handy for doing uh, sixteen-bit shifts as well. So, um, using Twitch app on TV. Oh, I've still not actually tried it on the TV. I should do that. Maybe when I'm in bed next time, feeling sorry for myself, I can watch Twitch through the TV because I missed loads of streams this week. I missed. Um, I missed the Mike and Molly stream last night. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hayes. I appreciate it. Every bit counts, right? Um, so that's it for the implied mode. So the implied mode is the the simple ones. They're they're the instructions that don't take any extra parameters. Um, you just you type them in. They take one byte up. Um, and you don't need to do anything else. They just perform their operation and they don't need any additional parameters. So next up is, um, let's do, let's do absolute mode. So absolute .sm. So absolute mode is when you want to, actually let's do absolute mode and zero page mode. I'll explain the difference between the two in a second. Um, so this will either be two, uh, I said put in brackets, two bytes or three bytes. So absolute mode is when you want to pass a parameter into something, uh, and that parameter is a memory address. Hey, Akmuffin. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Akmuffin, yeah. 
So let's start with the simple, the simple absolute modes, the ones, the ones that you all use most often. So let's do the load, load addresses. So your opcode as normal. This is one byte in memory, and then you can type a number in here. So I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about how how to think about these numbers. So you can put any number you want want here in 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 the format that you want. Now what what's going to happen is when you run this at um, through the assembler, it's just going to take. I believe the assembler will take the lowest bytes that it needs to, to make that instruction work. So in this case, if this was in hex, it would just basically be the equivalent of doing that. There are three number formats, number, uh, what would you call them? Uh, radixes, I guess, radices. Uh, no, what's, what's the word for it? The number bases, that's the word I'm thinking of. <coughs> what you mean you mean the long numbers so if you type a really long number in like that then the assembler knows that the biggest number it can accept is a 16-bit number so it's just going to truncate everything beyond that 16-bit and just use the lowest 16-bit um, if you supply a 16-bit number then you're using absolute mode. If you supply um, an 8-bit number, you're using zero page mode. And the difference here is that zero page mode is a little bit faster. It takes less cycles to do. And if we were to look at this in memory, you would have, uh, let's just do it, yeah. This is our opcode here. Uh, and then you would have your number in little endian format like so and zero page mode just means you would have less bytes and the addressing mode changes so it changes to a5 instead but essentially they're they're both just looking at memory addresses you can make some confusing code yeah you really could so that's how it looks with hexadecimal numbers, but you can use other number formats as well. So this is in hex. Um, let's just do like so. You can use binary as well. Um, I mean, you wouldn't want to use binary for a 16-bit address because it's going to be this long for a 16-bit address. But if you really wanted to, you could do. Binary is more useful uh, in immediate mode, which I'll show you when we get to that. Or you can just have um, decimal as well. Now, the important thing to know here is that this is absolute mode. That you can tell it's absolute mode because there's no other, no other indicator um, to say that it's a different addressing mode. The only indication is there's a number and a base format for it here. There's no, there's no uh, prefix for decimal base. So in absolute mode, what this will do is it will this will load the value at this address. I didn't know that, and I do now. Actually, I did see that pop up, and I didn't think about that. Uh, oh, that number's too long. Wait, oh yeah, because I've done a 32-bit number there. And that would be better. There we go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, it's yeah, it's the Kick ASM plugin for Sublime that's doing that, yeah. So this is uh, this is absolute. And this will load a value from this memory address. Um, and zero page basically looks the same, but you're only ever supplying an 8-bit number. Um, so you might have something like that. Uh, like so. And the difference between these is obviously zero page will take less memory ups, two bytes versus the three here, as we've noted here. Um, 
and it's slightly quicker to do things. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do everything in a copy dip down here of zero page. I'm just gonna go through um, the instructions um, that we've got there. So um, you've also got load x and load y. Obviously, um, I tend to try and use hexadecimal where I can because I find it easier uh, to deal with because the representation in memory of this instruction for instance is AD0023 and that's easy to think about because you can see it here as two separate values little endium format means they, they get reversed whereas these are a bit harder to think about um, especially decimal decimal you'd have to convert that value I mean I know that that value is actually um, is actually that and that's because it's um, should see it there. There you go. E zero two zero. Um, that's because it's the the border color. So, so try and use hexadecimal where you can. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to use hexadecimal. Sometimes it, it makes sense to use uh, decimal. But generally, when you're using uh, absolute mode, you probably want to be using um, hexadecimal instead. Uh, so you've also got load y as well. So these are all our load instructions. do that down here so that's the load instructions and likewise you've got the store instructions uh, and these are the counterparts to these so this puts this value that's at this memory address in the accumulator the value at this memory address in the X register the value in this memory address in the Y register and these will do the opposite so this will take the value in the accumulator and put it in that memory address and so on Sometimes I just use plain decimal because I have 200 IQ. Yes, Colt, that's kind of what, what I tend to do as well. I tend to use decimal for loops um, and binary when I'm setting bits as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the same. It, it depends on the loop as well. Sometimes, like, I tend to think of screen rows in hexadecimal weirdly. Um, so I use 28 in hexadecimal, which is 40 for, for an entire row. Um, but the more the thing is, the more you use hexadecimal, the more you'll learn to do that kind of maths in your head anyway. So um, it actually does get easier after a while, but it does take some practice. So I'm going to quickly go through um, the rest of the absolute mode uh, instructions, and then I'll show you what you can do with the the uh, the with a kick assembler to to do different things with those as well so you've also got as well as the load um, you've got the obvious jump and um, JSR so this will jump to this memory address now jump does not have a zero page uh, I don't think let me double check no it doesn't outrun outrun oh wow outrunception So jump doesn't have a zero page mode, neither does uh, jump to subroutine either. That doesn't mean you can't use zero page, you still can if you really wanted to, you could jump to, to this. It just means that internally this is actually going to look like this. And likewise, you know, that, uh, that internally will look like like that, um, you would you wouldn't write it like this. You would you would still write it like this. Uh, but it's important to understand that when you look at the the, the hexadecimal, the, the the code that it creates, the machine code that it creates, it is gonna um, put a zero after your your byte. So this will look like what's jump now? That's four uh, C. So this will look like this in memory. So it's just going to put a zero on the end here. So I'm actually going to leave that under there so you can see what's what's going on. 
<laughs> you only code in duo, scepter, decimal. What's, what would that be? Would that be duo, decimal, so 20, base 27, I guess. I don't actually know. I'm gonna say it's, I'm gonna say it's base 27. Who knows. Um, you've also got, uh, so we've done the loads, we've done the stores, we've done the jumps. You've got two increment and, uh, well, two, yeah, it, well, you've got increment and decrement, so. And these do have zero page. If it doesn't have a zero page, I will I will put a comment next to it. If it does, I'm not going to do anything extra. <clears throat> what other way is there to jump to a zero page address? Uh, you could do it indirectly as well. Um, so what these will do? These work exactly like the uh, the INX and INY values uh, operands. Op, op, uh, op codes, but instead of increasing a register, they increase the value that's at this memory location by one, uh, and in this case, decrease the value that's at that memory location by one. So quite often, when you're testing, you'll do something like this uh, in your code just to make sure that that code's being hit, or you want to see where that's happening. And you'll see the border flash whenever you do that. So yeah, that's true for you. you can you can push an address on the stack in RTS as well. Actually, that's something I would like to cover at some point as well, is, is using the stack to do uh, sneaky things as well, because there's loads of cool stuff you can do with the stack. Um, yeah, it is a shame you can't jump subroutine in direct. We'll get, we'll get on to indirect addressing um, soon. Um, so we've done the increase, we've done... The, so we've got the logical operations again, so you've got ASL, uh, LSR, uh, roll, and raw, um, and these have an absolute mode as well, so you can set these to do uh, the same operation, but instead of using, um, I'm just going to put random numbers in here, instead of using uh, the accumulator, it, it performs that operation on these memory addresses as well, so uh, just gonna write shifts there. Shifts and rolls, uh, and again, those have zero-page versions of them. Um, most of the most of the stuff you see in here has, has multiple addressing modes as well. Um, then we've got logical operators as well. I'm not going to write next to what each one is; they're fairly self-explanatory. Um, so you've got um, or, uh, you've got and, uh, you've got exclusive or, and you've also got bit. I will explain bit in a little bit more detail shortly, um, but for now just note that it's pretty much similar to and. Uh, and what these do is um, they they will perform a logical operation between the accumulator and the value in this address and store it in the accumulator. So I'm going to write that here. Perform logical operation between accumulator and memory store result in accumulator. The only exception to that is this one does not store the results in accumulator. Um, so I will explain this now. So this is pretty much um, like, not line, like an AND instruction, but it does not store the result in the accumulator. So if we take this piece of code, for example, um, well, I'm not going to, we'll get onto immediate mode in a minute, but let's assume that the accumulator has the values, uh, uh, something like that in the accumulator. And we have a memory address, so. Uh, 
that's that's that. Okay, so if we were to do and uh, 1000, the accumulator would then be the result of these two values handed together. So we'd get one like that, because if you end these two values, the only two bits that are the same is the last one here, you would get one. Um, what bit will do is it will perform this AND operation, but it will re it will leave the accumulator exactly as it was. Now you might think, well, what's the point in that? But what this will also do is it will set any flags that are relevant. So for instance, if I put a one here, then ANDing these two together produces zero. The accumulator won't get changed, but what will happen is the zero flag is set because the result of this is zero. So this is useful for doing stuff when you don't want to destroy what you've got in the accumulator. There's a lot of really good cases uh, for using that. For instance, you can do um, something like this. Uh, and what that will do is it will check, um, check the value of the joystick uh, and while fire is not being pressed, it will just keep checking the joystick. So this will basically wait for you to press the fire button. Um, so that's a handy way of, of doing it quickly without doing additional stuff. Uh, just catch up with chat a little bit. Uh, this is why for it takes so long to debug his code. It takes so long because you're always hiding shit under IO and kernel. That's what I mean, too much clever shit. Yeah. Um, I think at some point we will. I, I'm going to have probably a session where we go through logical operators, uh, shifts and rolls, and we'll cover some stuff that you can do with bit as well. It is really useful. Uh, the one annoying thing about bit is it doesn't have an immediate mode, um, which I'll explain when we get to immediate mode, which is going to come up very, very soon. Um, so you have to kind of be a bit clever about how you use how you use bit, but um, it is very useful. Uh, and we also have um, uh, add and subtract, and again these operate on the accumulator. So if you perform add with a memory address, it's going to take the value in that memory address and add it to the accumulator. Likewise, if you subtract uh, a memory address, it's going to take the value in the accumulator and subtract this value from it. Um, let's add and subtract. What else have we got? We've got... Uh, There's got to be another one. I'm sure I'm missing one. Uh, 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 oh, compare instructions, of course. And so finally, you've got the compares. And the compares, again, uh, will work on either the accumulator, the X register, or the Y register, and they look kind of like this. So you just compare the value in the accumulator with the value of that memory address, uh, compare Y, and so on. And that's it for absolute mode. So absolute mode is just um, a single parameter. Uh, it's only ever one parameter. You only ever an opcode will only ever have one parameter. Now, whether that parameter is 8-bit or 16-bit uh, depends on on the mode you're in. Whether you're in absolute mode, zero page, and some of the other modes have you know either 16-bit or 8-bit. But essentially, it's just one number. Um, and what that means is a compile time or assemble time. It's not really a compiler; it's an assembler. Um, you can use kick assembler to do stuff with those numbers. So let's put some uh, kick ASM calculations. Right. Say I know the screen is at zero four hundred. Right. That's the default location for the screen. But what I want to do is grab a value that's somewhere on that screen. Now I can work out where that value is. So I could say, okay, it's um, 10 rows down and uh, 8 characters across. So I could work out that 10 times 40 is 400, 8 characters across, 408. So then I could work out what this plus 408 is. Or what you can do, very conveniently, is you can use kick ASM to actually calculate this at, at, at assemble time. So you can do plus 40 times 10 to go down 10 rows, 
plus a. Internally, what this is going to do is just going to calculate this entire value when you assemble it and produce something. I mean, I don't know what the exact value is here, but let's let's just assume um, it's going to be something like 05. Let's see if I can work it out, actually. 144, 152. Uh, so it's going to be 0598. So that's essentially what this is doing. Uh, this is just giving you an easy way to do these calculations at compile time. Um, without having to work these values out. Now this gets really useful when you're using uh, other directives. So you can create for loops, for instance. Uh, let's just do that. Use that. So it, say you had, um, you wanted to load things from a couple of different memory addresses. So let's say we want to grab stuff on the first three lines. Uh, and we want to store them in uh, zero page, right? So let's say we want to store uh, um, one zero, one one, one two. That's using four. So we can simplify that by using a for loop. To, to make it more obvious what we're doing. And the way you use, anytime you see a dot before an instruction, it's a kick assembler directive. Um, there's actually helpers for this as well. So you see there, if you do FO tab, you'll get a, a for loop written for you. They're essentially the same as JavaScript loops. It's just you have a dot before the for. So in this case, we want three values. So we'll make our loop from zero what uh, go through 0, 1 and 2, exactly like a JavaScript loop or any other C style language. But now what we can do is we can, instead of putting all three of these in, we can just do one and use variables to to enhance it using the calculation. So we can do plus i times 40 um, because one for each row. In this case I would look at this and go okay actually 28 because that's what it's increasing by here in hexadecimal and we want to store that at 10 plus i so this produces exactly the same code as this but now we're doing it with something that's going to actually pre-calculate those values for us so we don't have to a write a lot of code uh, and b um have to do that calculation manually as well. We can let Kick Assembler do that, um, and you can do all sorts with this. I mean, you can you know you can do divides, you can do whatever, and it will it will just if it becomes a floating point number, it will just round, uh, not round it. Sorry, it will floor that value, so you'll just get um, the integer value for that. One other thing that's that's kind of useful, actually, no, we'll do that when we get to. Um, get to a media mode which we'll do next uh, I think that's I think that about it covers it for absolute mode oh one thing I would say as well uh, hi Chizit welcome to the stream Chiz Wicked Chizit Chizit see I call you because because I've worked in Chizik I know to call it Chizik uh, but yeah hi Chiz Wicked um, uh, what was I going to say? The I remember now. Oh yeah, one thing to bear in mind is that when you do these calculations, you can, if you want, you can use brackets, right? So, uh, I mean, this obviously means something completely different. This is going to be a completely different memory address now, because it's going to do this first, and then it's going to do this. However, I and Kick Assembler provides a method to do this. I would not use normal brackets use square brackets. The reason for this is there are some addressing modes that do use brackets like this. Um, and if you start using, if you get into the bad habit of using these brackets for your calculations, you you could run into problems when you, um, when you use some of the indirect modes, which I'll explain when we get to. So try and use uh, square brackets where you can. Uh, in fact, always use square brackets when you're doing calculations like this, and then you don't get confused when you look at the code. Um, there is one addressing mode which is very easy to get completely wrong, and it's very hard to see um, 
very hard to see what's gone wrong. Yeah, that's a good example actually, Acrofin. So, um, why use square brackets? So, uh, say we've got a, a memory address and we want to um, we want to add a value. So, say we've got a value here. Uh, just call it offset for now, right? Something like that. And we want to add the offset, and then we want to multiply. Um, actually, no. Let's let's do it. That's not going to work. So let's let's just imagine we did that. Okay. That is not the same as that. And the reason it's not the same is because this is uh, indirect mode. This implies a completely different mode. Uh, and I'll explain those modes when we get to them. Adding mass. <laughs> Do you know what? I did actually look at Overlord again the other day to see if I could figure out how to, how to destroy the uh, the sector loader and make it something different. So I, I will get to it eventually, Gunstar. You may have to wait a little bit, though. Welcome to the stream anyway, even if you've just come here to troll me with Overlord Talk, so. Yeah, that square bracket there is pointless, but um, I'll, I'll take that out. It doesn't need to be there. But just remember, if you're if you're using brackets to do calculations, then, then definitely, definitely uh, use square brackets. These two things are not the same. Um, Whereas this, uh, that's the same as, as that. I mean, that's the reason is that's a different indirect addressing mode. I will cover that when we get to it. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, Try and use square brackets whenever you want to do calculations, and you'll be fine. Hi, Carl. I've got a few minutes to watch the stream today. Cool. Um, it's a it's a pretty. We're just going through addressing modes. I'm trying to do it in a bit more detail than we've we've usually done these things. Uh, Make sure I cover as many uh, commands as possible. Uh, let's put a question mark on there. So that's absolute mode, and that's the sort of thing you can you can do with um, calculations in Kick Assembler. This is a really useful way of kind of simplifying things. Um, it, it's a great way of unrolling loops um, to avoid um, brackets, parentheses differ between different assemblers. Yeah, that's the other thing as well. If you're not using Kick Assembler, check your um, check your assembler manual to make sure. Um, uh, that you are using the correct bracket bracket format. Um, yeah, the, these for loops are really really handy, and as you kind of start writing bigger and bigger programs, you'll find really good uses for uh, for doing this. <coughs> it simplifies your code. It makes it easier to read, um, and it also kind of gives you a little bit of kind of an explanation as to why you're incrementing these values. Hey Stoker C sixty four, welcome to the stream. Um, I just can't hear the music now. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers absolute mode and zero page mode. Um, I'll put the zero page stuff at the top. It uses only 8-bit operands. So operands are these parameters, basically. That's what we call these um, parameters. This is called the opcode. This is called the operand. Um, okay, so let's have a look at immediate mode. So so immediate mode. Immediate mode is uh, two bytes. Uh, and so immediate mode uses an opcode op like every other code, but then 
it's immediate mode when you see the hash symbol. This is what tells you it's in immediate mode. This, the way to think about opcodes is you will see, no matter what the addressing mode is, you will see, uh, with the exception of implied mode, which just has the one, one thing, you will see um, an opcode, some other junk, you know, like brackets or a hash, um, then you will see your number, uh, and then you may see some other stuff at the end. So, for instance, in this case, this is the only bit that's the operand. All of this other stuff here is related to the opcode. This is just the addressing mode for the opcode. This is your operand, the number in the middle, everything else is your addressing mode. Always think of it as I like, always try and find the number. Once you found the number, everything else around it is your is your addressing mode. So immediate mode is basically when you see a hash in front of it. And all this is, it allows you to um, load a value directly into the accumulator or to, to whatever. It, it basically means use this value immediately. Don't, don't go and find a value from a memory address. The value I want you to use is this one here. So again, you can use decimal, uh, you can use hexadecimal, or you can use binary. Uh, but they all have the hash in front, and this tells you that it's immediate mode. Hash symbol implies immediate mode. And again, a lot of these, um, a lot of the instructions have immediate mode. So let's let's go through them here. So um, you've got load, obviously. You've got um, same for X as well. Uh, let's put loads uh, like so. Uh, you've got stores, so you've got. Uh, uh, no, you haven't got stores. What am I on about? You can't have stores because store will store to a, a memory address. Uh, so you've got loads. And you've got uh, compares. Oh, I was thinking you could store a value. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Eric and Finn. I'm, I'm thinking too much about everything and not, not paying much attention. Hi, Sinlo. Hi, Markisor. Mar uh, so you've got compare instructions. So this will compare the accumulator with uh, a value 0. Let's compare the x with the value 1. Compare y with the value two, and you've got uh, uh, logical operators as well. So you've got and in the value now. And is one where you probably end up using binary quite a lot. Um, again, you can use decimal, you can use hexadecimal. It doesn't matter. It's again just remember that look for the number. Find, find your number, find your base, that's, that's your kind of number that you're working on. Everything else is the, the addressing mode, that's the way to think about these things. Um, you've got exclusive or, uh, that's a quite common one that you'll, you'll probably end up doing a lot. Um, and uh, you've got or as well, um, which again you'll probably use binary mostly for. Uh, again these do the same as they did with the um, the absolute mode, but instead of grabbing the value to to uh, perform the logical operation with, in fact, let's copy that line. So in this case, oh, it's a generate. Raid, raid, raid. Hey, Jam Beta. Hi, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you very much for the raid, um, Jambita. And welcome to the stream, guys. Hi, Zarex Becky. How are you doing? Yeah, we're just we're going through um, the opcodes and the addressing modes on the 6502 and doing a little bit of explanation about uh, Kick Assembler as, as we go. So, uh, 
some immediate modded 38 years into the stream. Good old Sublime, I love it, yes. So what have you been doing tonight then, uh, Jambita? I didn't see your stream because I was, I was busy kind of tinkering with my microphone and stuff, so I uh, hope you're all well. And uh, for anybody that hasn't seen my stream before, um, Shannon 50k, I do um, 6, 5, 10 assembly on stream uh, twice a week, Some, mostly twice a week. Sometimes I miss a Saturday or a Thursday here and there. We do game development on the uh, Saturday and on the Thursday we do, we're do. we starting to do a little bit of a mix of everything. So sometimes we dissect a game, sometimes we'll look at a, a technique in a game and try and recreate it ourselves. And I've just started to do these kind of uh, 6502 kind of tutorials, um, which are a bit more kind of about, uh, not about kind of writing code directly at the moment, uh, but explaining how things work. So, uh, so and turn off bits, yes. And or to turn on bits, yeah. Any or flips bits, yeah. It, it, well, yeah, I mean, at the very basic level, yes, that's what they're doing. Um, but you might use them in, in various ways, so. Um, learning Z80 uh, 6502 is a pylon for me to make things for the VIC-20 hopefully oh yes definitely and you should make stuff um, thank you for the follow Street King welcome to the stream dude um, yeah so that's the logical operators in immediate mode very simple You'll notice there is no bit immediate mode, and this is a bit of a bugbear of mine and probably of everybody else's. Um, you cannot do this in, in immediate mode. So the, one of the problems with bit is you can only do it with zero page mode or um, absolute mode. I think you can do it with some indexing as well. Uh, let me just check. Uh, nope, that's it. You can do it in absolute and zero page mode. So. It is a little bit trickier to use because you don't have these, you can't just do this directly with a value, but um, uh, you, you you have to kind of do it with memory addresses. So let's just write what this is doing. So this performs a logical operation between the accumulator and immediate value. The immediate value being, as we said, the number there. Thank you, for, for, uh, thank you for the follow the geek. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I'd like to see some VIC-20 stuff. Definitely need some more of that. I need to get a VIC-20 actually. I sold mine a long time ago and because I was never using it. Um, and it felt a bit of a waste just having it sat there. But I would like to get one back again at some point actually. I'd like to get my Commodore collection back. Um, okay, what else have we got in immediate mode? We have... Um, Oh, uh, of course, we've got add and subtract as well, so. And these, again, perform stuff on the accumulator, so this will add the value 2 to the accumulator, and this will subtract the value 2 from the accumulator. Um, and that's pretty much it. So the way to remember immediate mode is put a hash in front of the number, uh, and it's it's immediate mode. As I say, when you're looking at instructions, if you're looking at a complex instruction, something like, um, uh, let's think about this. Let's say we had, uh, 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 This instruction. I mean, the addressing mode is not important. We'll we'll look at that in a minute. But the way to look at this is first find your number. So our number is this bit here. It's in square brackets. So this is part of the number. That's absolutely fine. That is our number. This bit here in the middle. The rest of it is the addressing mode and the opcode. So this is the opcode, and this bracket and the bracket comma y is the addressing mode. This is actually a zero paged indexed address with y. Uh, we'll go over that at some point. Um, yeah, as Andy said, the hash means number, right? You, you when you when you see that, you think you can think number, whatever. So whenever you see that, it just means use the number that's immediately following this. Um, and it's quite a simple mode. There's, you know, as you can see, there's not many instru instructions that use it. Um, well, you will use it everywhere because you kind of have to. Um, 
Let's catch up with chat a little bit. Uh, looks like a good editor for ASM. Yeah, this is um, this is Sublime Text Editor with yeah, as as Colt says, with Kick Assembly plugin. It's really really handy. Uh, and I found a new feature today. Today, thanks to I can't remember who mentioned it. I think it was, I don't know actually. Uh, which is if you hover over these numbers. It gives you the decimal and the binary representation as well, which is really handy. I uh, didn't know you could do that, but I do now. I wonder if it actually will calculate stuff for you as well. Uh, so if I did... Oh, you can mix and match number number values as well. No, it doesn't. It just gives me one or the other. Oh, actually... Yeah, it's getting confused there. But you can mix and match number uh, formats like that as well. So quite often you might see something like... Um, uh, generally, you, you, you probably won't do it in the immediate mode, but say in like absolute mode, you might have something like that, a memory address. Uh, like screen memory, for instance. I use hexadecimal, but you might quite often see people write something like this to get the 40th row, uh, to get the 10th row. So we're mixing decimal values with hexadecimal values here. Kick assembler will just work out what the correct values are. Can you suggest a good assembly document? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by an assembly document. You mean to learn assembly or to kind of get a list of all these opcodes? Um, I do have a, if you, after learning assembly, I do have a patron um, account which you can sign up for for like two dollars I think something like that and I do have um, some write-ups which I need to catch up on I'm way behind on them um, but the, the write-ups that are there so far will give you a very good grounding in um, in most of this um, and then just watch the videos as well I guess uh, but there are other there are other uh, sources out there for a lot of these things as well uh, Andy Magic Knight's got a blog as well where he goes over some of these uh, some of these concepts uh, more about the game dev side of things but um, but yeah he's it's good to good to check out as well Hi Sigabjorn welcome to the stream um, okay, I'm going to take a quick two minute smoke break and then when we come back we'll start looking at, let's have a look, um, we'll do we'll do absolute indexed addressing as well, so we'll do that next. Oh yeah, there's always the Discord as well, that's a good place to go if you want to like chat to people about stuff, get some kind of immediate advice on things, a uh, really handy place to go to. Uh, all right, I'm going to take two minutes, guys. I'll be right back as quickly as possible. And I'm back. Told you it'd be quick. <laughs> Hi, Zapitalia. Well, welcome to the stream. Yeah, I do. I do take a break every hour or so. I need to keep my uh, nicotine levels up. Okay, so let's move on to uh, indexed addressing. So this is absolute indexed addressing that we're going to do now. Um, actually, this will cover zero page as well. So zero page and absolute indexed. Um, let's see if I've missed anything. No. Hayes is falling asleep. <laughs> okay, so index addressing is really useful. This is where you'll start um, creating loops um, using the increment counters. Um, so index addressing is basically using the X and Y registers. Uh, use X and Y register to offset memory addresses. So what do I mean by that? So if you were to load the value at 1000 and then you wanted to load the value at 1001 and you wanted to load the value at 1002 like so and you wanted to store them. Let's say we're storing them in zero page again.
and you wanted to do that 40 times, that's going to be a lot of code. So the easiest way to do this is to use indexed addressing. So instead what you would do is you would load a value into the X register. Let's call this an example. And let's start tabbing things a little bit. Um, and then what you can do is you can load the value at 1000 plus the value of X. So this comma X basically means this is again, like I say, if you look, you look for the number, this is our number, the rest of it, this bit and this bit here, this bit and this bit is your, your opcode and addressing mode. And this is what index addressing looks like. You have a comma and then you have either X or Y. So in our case, we're going to load the value at 1000 but what this what this will do is it will look at the value that's in the x register and it will add it to this memory address and then fetch it and so you can do the same with store as well so you can store at the memory address like so so then what you can do is you can increase that value and then you can you can loop basically so if we put a loop in here so we check if the value is three and if it's not three we jump back again so it looks like a lot more code but this is because we're only doing three values if we were to do 40 values uh, like so like that uh, 40 values would actually be that then this would be massive this would be what uh, 80 instructions whereas we could do the same thing like that and so all this is doing is it's taking the value of X and it's increasing it for every iteration of this loop it's increasing it by one and then where it's the equivalent of so this would be on the first first run it would be that on the second one it would be that on the third run it would be that and so on and so on and that's essentially what it's doing behind the scenes what you can't do is do anything with this X here so you can't do a calculation here because you can only do the calculation on the number you can't change the addressing mode like this so that's not valid um, so put a note down here Never ending story, it always sticks out there. Only calculations, uh, only uh, calculations only allowed on the number, not the addressing mode, uh, what would you call it, the addressing mode part, let's just put part, that'll be enough to explain it. So that's invalid. So like the immediate, uh, like the absolute modes, you have, um, you have loads, so you've got comma x, You've also got comma y. Uh, you can put a space there, you cannot put a space there, but it doesn't really matter, it just tokenizes everything. So um, I like to kind of put a space like that. Um, you've also got load x, comma y, and you've also got load y, comma x you don't have comma a that's in, invalid that you can't use that the in, indexed addressing always uses x or y it can never use the accumulator in that way um, I've got to check this because some of them have um, both x and y and some of them don't so uh, let's have a look so load x has zero page uh, zero page x Okay, so you have zero page X, 
there is no uh, zero page Y indexing. Don't know why, it just doesn't exist. Um, likewise, there is uh, load X. Uh, you can do load, oops, comma Y. Yeah, that's small, there we go. I don't know why you can't do both X and Y, but you, you can't. It's just not an, uh, not an instruction that's there. <clears throat> um, and likewise, you've got uh, load Y, zero page, comma X. Um, and then you've got stores, so stores. Same thing applies here. We, we used it here to do these these stores in here. Um, you do have uh, store comma x, store accumulator comma x, store accumulator comma y. You don't have um, uh, let's just put a note here. There is no st store x, comma y, or store y, comma x. Again, I don't know why they just they don't exist. You can't use them. <clears throat> um, however, and this is the annoying thing as well. In zero page. Oops. Uh, you do have obviously comma x and comma y I believe I think you can no nope, you only have uh, you don't have comma y okay there is no zero page y index for store uh, for load accumulator um, but you do have store x comma y and you do have store y comma x. So it's always worth checking. If you want to check these things, this link I'm going to post now um, is, is what I use for kind of checking whether or not you can or can't do these things. There's a table, uh, there's a big table at the top which has all the cycle numbers and stuff and then underneath those there's a few tables which have the um, the instructions and uh, the opcodes for the columns that you can use it also tells you which flags they affect as well which is is really useful so it's a it's a handy handy thing to use uh, I think an instruction can only access X or Y not use both at the same time um, yeah but it's still it's still really weird how it does some things because you can do it in zero page, but you can't do it um, as an absolute index. So you can do zero page index with Y and X using X and Y opposite, um, but you can't do it the other way. Um, okay, so that's stores. I've seen something where you can make a zero page address force to be a full 16 bit address is so that you can use the indexes so you can use um, uh, can you do it with no you can only do it with indirect zero page yeah I'm not sure how you would do that I'm not sure how you would do that at all but to be honest you, this is usually enough you can usually get by with, with just these five five index stores as well um okay what else have we got with in absolute indexed so um i'm not going to write explanations for for the rest of them because they are the same as um the other uh, absolute mode stuff just with indexing but i will list them here as well but yeah maybe you are thinking 65816 um 
I thought if you can find that, Andy, I'd be really interested in seeing that because if there is a way to do that, that could be useful. Oh yeah, there might be. So there are some illegal instructions as well. Um, for instance, there is um, uh, there is uh, which is the one that we can't do. So we can't do uh, store. So I think there is a store. Uh, no, so there are some illegal instructions that let you do various things, but we're not gonna we're not gonna go through them now. But we will um, we will at some point. I might do a stream on illegal instructions actually, because they are quite interesting. And they're really good for optimizing things as well. Uh, okay, so let's list the other the other indexed addressing. So you've got uh, the logical stuff. Uh, so again, you've got or x and or comma y um, these also work in zero page x only as well so let's keep it there and I think that applies to them all let me just check yeah so I'm just gonna copy these down like so um, so same applies to and, same applies to eor, exclusive or as well. Um, and these again, they will they will add the, the value that's in the, the register that you define um, to the memory address that you're defining and then perform the logical operation against the accumulator. Um, you've also got uh, shifts as well. So shifts only work on the X register. Indexing is a pain, as you can see. Uh, shifts only work with the X register. No Y indexing at all. And so here you've got um, arithmetic shift left, uh, comma X. And then uh, arithmetic shift left zero page comma x uh, logical shift right uh, logical shift right zero page comma x uh, exclusive or uh, yeah that's those and there is no um, bit instruction I believe for those I need to check yeah so bit only has absolute and zero page um, so that's it for kind of indexing um, what should we do next so we've done absolute X absolute Y we've done absolute and zero page zero page X zero page Y let's do um, let's do the relatives next as well Um, again with these as well you can you can still use calculations here you can always do calculations on this number here whether it's a, a memory address or an immediate mode value here you can always do calculations here you just got to remember you can't do calculations on this value here this isn't a variable this is just part of the addressing mode it's just saying this is an addressing mode which is using the or instruction against a memory address which is offset by this index here uh, okay, so let's do uh, relative. So relative instructions are an interesting one because we've kind of, well, ever since the, the first assemblers, really, they, they've been abstracted. Um, so relative instructions are basically branch instructions there are one two three four five six seven eight of them uh, and they branch on four of the processor flags um, depending on whether they're set or not um, so every 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 branch instruction has an opposite uh, and branch instructions are always two bytes Actually, did I write the two or three in here zero page to absolute index three. Relative instructions always two bytes, and they look like this. So uh, one of the most common ones you'll see is 
uh, this and generally what what you will do is you will add a label in here of some kind uh, so let's call it skip um, so you might do uh, load value from let's grab the border color um, and if it's equal to zero skip otherwise you know do something else um, what this is actually doing is it's getting the distance from here to here and it uses a sign number so this actually creates uh, an 8-bit signed number uh, which is the distance from the beginning of the branch instruction to the label and so this will be minus 127 to 127 uh, so what does that mean that means this is where the branch instruction starts so there is one byte here another byte here because it's just a single 8-bit signed number another byte here another byte here so the distance from here to here is you count it so you go one two three four so the distance here is of four so internally um, the assembler is going to convert this into Print of equal zero four. Now you can't write this um, directly in the code. You can't. You can't do that. Some assemblies you might be able to do that, um, but in kick assembly you won't be able to because what this will do is it will say try and branch to the memory address four, and that's probably going to be too far away and you'll get an illegal um, illegal thing. Oh yeah, you're right. Actually, it's minus one to eight. Yeah, thank you steps. Um, so this is why we use labels here as well. Uh, if it's going backwards, then basically it creates a, a signed version of the number. So if we were to go back to here, for instance, uh, if we put the skip there instead and that, that didn't exist, um, actually I'll leave both labels in, uh, you can, I mean, this is only pseudo code, so the distance to this is one, two, three, minus three. And that will end up in signed uh, eight bits, so in two's complement, um, that will end up being FD. So that would create let's put them the right way around so you can see. And this is why you will get um, I have to make code even more unreadable. Yeah, I'm going to explain that in a second as well. Um, yeah, so um, this is why if your branches uh, jump more than 127 bytes forwards or 128 bytes backwards, you'll get an illegal relative address distance. And that's as I've shown in the... Um, in the, in the game stream when you do that you can there's there's a little trick you can do to kind of flip the the uh the branch instruction on its head and use a jump instead uh, i'm not going to go through that now um right so as carl rightly points out what you can do if you really want to kind of count things is you can do branch instructions using the program counter instead so we showed you. I showed you earlier how to do a check for the fire button. So this instruction will set the zero flag um, when the fire button is pressed. So what you can do is you can do branch. Uh, let's put a, a label like that, and you can do something like that. Or, and this is quite common when you're doing short distance jumps like this, you can just say program counter which is here, program count is always at the beginning of your instructions. 
minus 3. And so what this will do, it will say, okay, I'm going to branch to the memory address that is 3, three behind the current address. This is the current address, which is here, and minus 3 is 1, 2, 3, and so it will jump to this point. Um, you'll see that quite a lot in code. It is usually star minus 3 as well, weirdly, because it is the common... Um, actually, I don't like that. I don't like the spaces. Um, so this branches from current instruction star minus 3 back to the bit dc00. So that's what relative mode is. Um, yeah, exactly. If you add, if you were to add another command here, obviously it would break. But generally, you'll see these when you're doing things like another one that you might do is um, I'll put I'll write what they're doing. Uh, so wait for fire button. Um, wait for raster line. Uh, I've used this quite a lot while we've been doing code. So you you pick a line, say FF. Um, and then you compare it with D012 and if it's not the same D star minus 3 and you go back to here so this will um, this will keep repeating this code until the the, the value in the raster uh, matches FF I missed who that was it was it was a follow I believe it was N ND fish thank you ND fish for the follow welcome to the stream yeah, compare D012 branch on equal minus 3 is very common. It's a, it's a real simple way of just kind of waiting for a line. Um, you'll see it in lots of code, especially if you're doing, um, like a, another one you might see a lot of is uh, that one. Where And what this is saying um, is just wait till, wait till you move to the next line. So you load the current line in, uh, then you check, you check the current line, and when they, when they still matches, you just keep repeating it. Um, actually, it would be branch of equal like that. So this will just keep repeating this code until you move on to the next rest line. Thank you for follow V V Koskiv. Thank you. I can't say that name, so I'm going to call you VK. Thank you for the follow VK. You want to write six five zero two for your Apple two? Yeah, I've I've never actually used an Apple two. I'd I'd, be, I'd like to do that at some point. I'm not a big Apple fan though, but I do like the Apple II. The fact that they use the 6502 wins them a few points in my book. Right, I need to open a new can because that one's empty. So let's go through the instructions that we've got. Um, so we have branches that are based on a negative flag. So you've got branch if plus. So if the if the the, the last operation set the uh, cleared the negative flag, um, I'm going to call the labels what they are as well. So then you've got branch if minus minus. Oops. Then you've got the overflow flag. Again, I'm not going to go into the overflow flag now, but I will do a stream on um, arithmetic and uh, stuff. Uh, I've got to stop knocking Apple. <laughs> stop cocking Apple. <laughs> yeah, all this will apply to any 6502 machine. And to a certain extent, it will apply to derivatives of that as well, like the uh, PC engine. Um, uh, which is, I can't remember what that is, it's like a 6C816 or something, but um, most of the commands are the same. There are a few extra ones as well, but um, the, the, the kind of addressing modes will be really helpful. Um, so if it's clear, the overflow flag is clear, and if the overflow flag is set, um, then you've got the zero flag. So you've got a branch of equal, equal to zero, branch if not equal, uh, not equal to zero. Um, again, I'm not going to explain why comparison instructions will set these values uh, and why subtractions and additions will set these values and why loading will. We'll go through that in another stream, but 
for now just know that these branch instructions are based on these flags and what's the last flag oh the carry flag of course uh, so if it's clear a branch of the carry is set um, I think that's it for relative mode I don't think there are any more um, so we'll move on to uh, well this is going to be the smallest file ever we're going to do indirect now uh, just indirect not indirect index we're just going to do uh, indirect So indirect mode has one instruction. Only one opcode uses this mode, and that is jump. There is no zero page version of this, I don't think. I'm pretty sure there's not. Let me just double check that. I have to keep checking these things now and again. Uh, yep, there's no zero page, of course there's no zero page version, will always be three bytes, So what does this do? So this this is why you should use square brackets whenever you're doing calculations. So you can do again, you can do any calculation you want on that number. Whenever you see the number, you can do a calculation on it. That's not a problem. Uh, again, you can use any number base in here as well. You could use binary, you could use hexadecimal, or decimal, doesn't matter. What this instruction does is it doesn't jump to this address, it looks in this address. So if you imagine um, uh, let's let's say memory looks like this. Uh, uh, let's just try and find an interesting, interesting uh, memory location. I like to I like to pick some fun ones. Let's have a look. Um, uh, what's oh I know which one. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. Right. So say we have the following in the hex editor. Um, this will read the address found at this location. So we look up here, that address is, in this case, FCE2, because it's little endian. So you've got to remember it's always going to put the, the lower nibble first, uh, so the lower byte first. Um, and the higher byte second, so it's going to look like that, and it will jump to that address instead. And that's what indirect mode is about. It's about using the address that you supply to look up another address. Uh, and in this case, resets. Uh, yep, I did implied first of all, yep. Yeah, automatic and mass stream would be good. I think the next one I do, I'm going to do um, uh, the uh, what something for I suggested quite a few times. Um, I'm going to do the Krill's loader and cartridge loading as well. So I've got a I've got a, a game I've been working on and I've written a cart loading library for that that has disk handling in it as well. Um, I'll share that with you guys and show you how to use it and, and set it up. Um, it's in a good state now that it can be used. Uh, handles um, D64s with Krill Loader. Um, 
it handles uh, magic desk cartridges and it handles the the gmod 2 commercial cartridge format as well um, so that's it for indirect very very simple uh, there's only one instruction that uses it it's this one it's really handy if you've got jump tables so for instance you might have uh, handy for jump tables uh, you may have uh, something at a memory address so say this was at memory address 1000 and we stored in here um, uh, you know like behavior one this is an address um, actually let's just copy that line down it's probably the easiest way so you've got I think we use this do we use this for enemy behaviors maybe not but um, uh, something like that so this is our table of, of behaviors and then we might do something like um, uh, load the accumulator with current behavior um, and we would uh, double it so our value now becomes 0, 2, 4 uh, or 6 which we can use as offsets into here uh, and then we could store that at. Um, I mean, it's getting a bit more complicated, but uh, you'll see what I'm trying to do. So, what we're doing here is we're taking a current behavior, which is one of these. Uh, we're doubling that number because these are two bytes each. And then we're storing it in. Uh, sorry, that should be plus one, not two. Um, <laughs> seriously, after this comes the fun part, and you want to see Hayes, yeah. Um, that will basically take this number and store it in this location here. Uh, so this becomes 00, zero or zero 02 or zero 04 or zero 06. And then it will jump to one of these labels, basically, and run the code. So it's really handy for doing these kind of um, jump tables. You could also read these values from the table and store it there and not use di in direct mode but it's a good good way to kind of do things like this. Uh, okay so yes we're on to the fun part now so uh, let's have a look what we've got left. We literally only have the indirect stuff to do now. So let's start with indirect y. Um, I'm going to do these in two different files and you'll you'll see why I do it in two different files in a second so uh, I don't even know the exact phrasing for this I, I think it's called indirect sorry zero page indirect zero page indirect y index yeah Okay, so zero page indirect y indexed two bytes. So this is an interesting mode. So um, let's try to think how best to explain this. So let's make another hex view here. Uh, and let's put some, some details into here. So let's do uh, 4020, let's tab it out a little bit. Doesn't really matter what I put there. Uh, and then at 2040, we have some other numbers here, so. Yeah, he's going to love this one. This is this is one where he probably should be asking questions as well. As this is this is the more complicated modes as well now. So um, let me just bring up the list of what ones you can use it on. Uh, yeah, there's only two, and the yeah, okay. 
none of those, just those. Okay, so let's do it with load. Say I wanted to grab... Um, Actually, let's put another let's put another row in here. This will make more sense once I once I finish this. So and let's say this is going backwards, so it just looks like it's actually doing something useful. <clears throat> so what zero page? indirect Y index addressing that lets you do. Um, it lets you indirectly access a value um, using zero page as a pointer to it as well. <clears throat> so what this is going to do, um, it's going to, first of all, it's going to look in zero page at address one zero and it's going to grab the the 16 bit address that we find there it's always it's always going to create a 16 bit address if you wanted this to to access zero page you still have to use two bytes to do it um, we want to access this row of bytes here so we're going to look up the address in zero page we get 2040 And then it's going to add so let's put it like three like that. It's going to add that Y register offset to it. So this is actually going to grab the value that's at this location here. So it's going to load value from this. Uh, address. Now why would you want to do that it, when you could just do something like if you were doing a loop through these numbers you would probably do something like that. Well the reason you would do that is if you wanted to actually change where you were looking things up. So say I wanted to grab the stuff from this address here all I have to do now is that. Um, or I could just change these values here. So say I've got multiple tables going all the way down here. Uh, what I can do is quite easily, um, I can just load the value in um, one zero. I can add eight to it, store it back again. And now when I do that, I'm getting the next next row instead and this is really useful when you want to um, replace self-modifying code with something which is a lot more flexible um, so with self-modifying code you could do the same thing you could um, use instead of self-modifying code so with self-modifying code, we do the same thing like so. Um, we'd create a self-mod variable here, um, and then we would uh, load accumulator with 2040, y. Uh, let's create a thing called loop here, for instance. Um, and then you could uh, load accumulator with self-mod plus one, Add eight to it. And jump back to loop. The problem is with this method, this will do pretty much the same thing. But the problem with this method is, is now if you want to do this in a few locations, so say you want to store that at D020, and then you want to do something else with like, um, uh, I don't know, you, you, you shift that value, store it at D021, and then you want to grab again that value. I mean, you wouldn't do it like this, it's inefficient. Now you've got to change it in two places. 
So now you'd have to do this twice. Like so. And so that gets really inefficient. If you're doing that in lots and lots and lots of places, you mean no plus one. Yeah, it is a lot harder to read as well like this. Um, if you're doing this in lots of places, say you've got four or five of these uh, lookups that you want to use, you've got to change it for every single one that you've got. But with this method, all you have to do is change it in zero page. So, creates messy code and multiple... multiple self mods uh, gets inefficient fast um, it's really good for doing things like um, collision as well so for instance you might have uh, a list of screen rows as well <laughs> come to debug yes yes it is indeed um, Say you've got, uh, let's put in here, great for collision. Say you've got, uh, oh, actually, this is good because we can talk about uh, we can talk about the fill command while we're at it as well. Say you've got two tables, and these point to um, the the beginning of the row on the screen, so the the, the far left column on the screen. So what you can do with the fill command, you can fill command is basically like creating a for loop. Uh, and what this will do is it will iterate from zero to 24 in the I thing. So it creates 25 iterations. Each iteration uses the variable I and that will go from zero to the one value one below that. And you can create a lookup like so. And this creates an address the memory address for the beginning of that row and what you can do with this if you put it in square brackets I always like to put it in square brackets for these sort of things this is our calculation if you put an arrow sign there that uh, that sorry the less than sign grabs the LSB uh, byte of a 16 bit value so this will now have the values in it. Uh, this is basically the same as doing this. It's basically the same as doing 0, 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240. And then it's going to loop around um, because the, the memory address is going to go over the 0500 barrier. And you're going to end up with uh, 24, I think. Uh, yeah. 64 and so on and this will grab the most significant byte so the reason you would do that is if you wanted to grab a position on the screen you might have an X and a Y so <coughs> uh, Say we've got these two values. Um, and we want to we want to find out what's at that location on the screen. These think these numbers are going to change all the time. If you're moving around the screen, you're going to be. Uh, <coughs> I haven't mentioned the cost implication of indexing over page boundaries. Oh yes, I will explain that as well in a minute. Good, good point actually. Um, I'll, I'll explain. I'll do this bit first, and then I will explain what happens when you go over zero page boundaries. Uh, well, there's there's two problems. It's going over boundaries, which has a cost implication, and then there's going over zero page boundaries as well, which is even more fun. Um, yeah, say you're moving a character around the screen, and you want to know what what is what screen characters are underneath that. Um, you need to kind of work out where this 
position is on the screen. You, you've got a sprite position, you've converted it into kind of screen space, so you now you know it's six characters across, ten rows down. So what you can do is you can load the value in here, use the Y, so we're using index in here to grab the uh, the 16th, or well, actually the 17th, but because um, we start at zero, um, value from there here. And you can store that in a zero page address like so. And then you can grab the 16th value of MSB and store it in the next zero page value. Now, one zero in zero page contains the um, contains the start of the uh, screen row address. So now we have in zero page we have a value which is pointing to a memory address at the beginning of that row. So now what you can do, actually let's just switch these actually no I won't switch them around, leave them as X and Y. So now what you can use, you can use zero page index to Y address in to actually look what's in that address. So you can say number Y. Uh, y needs to be the value that's in X. So what we'll do is we'll transfer X to the accumulator and transfer it here. Move the X position into the Y register. And now what we're doing is we're looking up that address. So we look in memory to find that screen address in zero page. We add the contents of the Y register, which is our X position because we've moved it. And now we've got a lookup, which is grabbing that exact character on the screen. Oh, am I back? Go back three minutes. Oh, damn it. Okay. Um, am I back on? What did you hear me do last? I'm back. Okay, I've written the code. I'll I'll explain what it's doing. So we've got our screen rows here. And these are the start addresses of uh, memory addresses on screen. So if we look on, if, let me just open open the char editor. So if you look at a screen uh, like so, this table represents all the memory addresses for these characters down the side of the screen here uh, in least significant byte and most significant byte format. Uh, I just on the fill. Okay, so yeah, so these these little arrows here, uh, the, the greater and less than sign will grab the least significant byte of a 16-bit number and the most significant byte of a 16-bit number. And you can see we're, we're passing a number in, we're using a calculation, then we're grabbing the, the LSB of it. And this is how we would fill that table up. Then you can set an X and a Y position on screen that you want to look up. You can grab the row by using the, the Y position. So we, we look through this, the, this list of rows. They're numbered from 0 here to 24. So if we want to know what's on line 11, we just set Y to 11. And we, we read those values out and we, we will know where that row is in memory. We store those values in 0 page in consecutive bytes here. So now zero page has, you know, uh, a little endian format of that address. And then we can use that to look up, uh, we have to transfer the X into the Y register because you can only use Y addressing for this. Um, and then we can use that index to, to work out where that a memory address is that's part way across the screen. So if that makes sense. Drunk Mike is in the house. Welcome Drunk Mike. I think that makes sense. Um, it is a complicated topic and it's something that took me a few goes before I got, got the hang of it. But once you get the hang of it, it's really, really powerful and you can do a lot of stuff with it. Uh, I use it a lot for collision. Um, it's also, I mean, it's useful for all sorts of things. I'm trying to think of some more examples offhand, but it's, um, why it's so useful um, but the the main the main reason two reasons I use it is one if I'm doing lots of self-modifying code 
Self-modifying code is great because it, it can be quite quick. I mean, self-modifying code will run faster um, than index code if you're just using one. But the moment you start getting multiple self-mods, then you start losing that speed benefit and you're better off just taking the extra cycle hit um, and using using this, this addressing instead. So this will now grabs the character at the XY location we wanted. So where can you use this, this mode? So um, let's put the instructions down here. So you can use it. It's always on the accumulator. There is no indirect zero page addressing for anything other than the accumulator. So I'm going to put that in there, always. You think that's tricky, the next one is even worse. So um, you have uh, load and store, obviously. Um, you have, you have, hang on, uh, compare, you have arithmetic as well, so you have add and subtract, and you also have logic. So you have uh, and uh, or and exclusive or I think that's it. Uh, and or add to compare. Yep, load and store. Swapping X and Y. Yes, I do realize that swapping X and Y. I did look at that and think that, but I thought, well, for the purposes of using X and Y position on screen, just I'm just going to leave it as it is, just because... Uh... Actually, no, do you know what? I, I will simplify it, so... It seems a little bit backwards, but... Yeah, it means we don't have to do that shift. You can think about it. As long as you realize that Y is actually the X position, X is actually the Y position. Yeah, as it gets confusing, but uh, when I took a break from 6502 for like a decade or whatever it was, did you figure eight? Actually, it was probably more than a decade. We're probably talking about 20 years it was. So it was, I did 6502 mostly in my teenage years, um, and it's only in the past three or four years that I picked it up again. As you can tell, I'm not I'm not 30-something, which I was. Um uh, actually, do, do you know what I? I didn't struggle that much. Actually, I struggled more with it in my teenage years than I did now. I think because I'd, I, I kind of didn't just jump straight into it again. I picked up a book, uh, well, not a book, a, a website, and just went through the instructions and tried to figure out what they were doing before I actually sat down and did anything. Um, and the, actually, the first thing I did was write. Um, a kind of 6502 interpreter um, so I wasn't using an emulator I wasn't writing code in in uh, kick assembler I was writing code in uh, just in notepad um, and just writing something which would emulate kind of emulate a 6502 system um, so that kind of helped me understand it a little bit more um, but yeah it's I mean to be honest, the, the stuff I forgot the most was what all the memory addresses do. Um, and that's something that really, unless you're doing it all the time, you're never going to remember what they all do and, and how to do certain things. So I had to look a lot of that up again. Okay, I'm going to take a quick two minute break. Then when I come back, we're going to do the next one, which is zero page X indexed indirect. Um, 
which is it sounds like it would be the same but it's not it's a little bit different it looks similar but it is different and it's also the one instruction that you have to remember the format for if you get the format wrong it will not be doing what you think it's doing so um i will take a quick two minute break and then when i come back we'll do that all right right back and i'm back let's catch up a little bit uh, uh da -da. <laughs> i have to look at my x and think why wow, that's a good one i like that i just ate a full 10 inch pepperoni all by myself nice that's the beer that mike uh, so i'm totally ready i assume you mean there to have two games that screen is kicking great effect oh yeah I think I am inside want to be a demo coder but I just I'd rather make games games are more fun uh, okay cool right let's do the next one so the next one I need to get this right this is called zero page X indexed indirect now the important thing is the indexing happens before the indirection. So what do I mean by that? Let's uh, let's write the title here again. So zero page x indexed indirect. What time did I explain it here? Okay, so let's do another hex view again. Let's grab this thing. Put this in here. Um, okay, so how do I start explaining it here? Uh, okay, I just did an example of how it works. I forgot that I will do the cost stuff after this, I promise you. Just going to get this one out of the way and then we'll, we'll explain about indexed address. And I will go back to those. Uh, to the. In fact, no, let's do it now, actually. Let's do it while, I, while it's in my before I forget so we should have indexed in here absolute indexed okay so when you do indexed addressing the you'll see on that page that I linked let me link it again uh, so on that page the very first table is like a matrix of all the commands and you'll see that some of the commands have a star next to them and what that star means is if you cross a page boundary, then the number of cycles increases. So this applies to a relative addressing. It applies to index addressing, all types of indexed addressing. Um, so let's let's look at it from this point of view. So this is, um, uh, what's the load? I think it's four cycles. Hang on, uh, load, accumulator indexed. Right, yeah, it's four cycles. So this takes four cycles to operate. However, if this address, the, the calculated address, crosses a page boundary, then it increases to five cycles. So what's a page boundary? So a page boundary is when the upper uh, byte of a 16-bit address so this bit here uh, changes. So this is a page. A page runs from uh, from zero to FF, and and this is uh, the next page. So, if we load x with something like 10, and then we do load accumulator with 10ff, x, this uh, is rooted at 10ff, so the, the root value is 10ff. Um, but accesses 
one one zero f crossing a page boundary and using an extra cycle. This is the same for branch instructions as well. So with a branch instruction, if you're um, if you branch from one page into another page, it will cost you an extra cycle. Um, it's important to know that because if you're doing stuff which is timing critical and you, you're doing something which is, I don't know, based on stable rasters or you need to you timing things exactly so they happen at the right point on the screen, it's very important to know when you're crossing those page boundaries. Also, when you're optimizing code as well, um, you may be looking at a routine thinking, okay, so this, you may look at it and calculate how many cycles it takes and say, okay, this loop takes 200 cycles. Well, you need to pay close attention to are any of your indexes crossing page boundaries, because if they are, they're going to cost you a few extra cycles. Um, see bottom of page. So how do you avoid a page boundary? Okay, let's imagine we have some code and it lives at um, this location here, right? And we do something like uh, we load the value from there, we compare it to here, and if it's equal, we'll jump to this location, okay? And otherwise, we'll return from the subroutine here. This function is the memory addresses for this is 10fc, then 10ff, then uh, 1, uh, hang on, 1101, uh, 1103, which means this is at 1104. So this would take uh, three cycles. If a branch is taken, it takes three cycles. If it's not taken, it takes two. Normally, would be three cycles to take this branch. Actually, no, that's, that's, that's not right. Let's do it. Let's knock it back a bit. There we go. Uh, take four off B. Uh, this would be F. D. So this would be D E F. Uh, which makes this one one zero one. However, we cross from page one zero to one one, so it will instead take four cycles. Now normally you wouldn't you wouldn't set a memory address like this but you may be in the middle of a piece of code uh, that's several pages long um, several kind of editor pages long and you may find that your branch instruction is crossing one of these boundaries and you may want to stop that from happening. Um, so what you can do, you can use the align function, uh, the align directive. So you type dot align 100. So if I put this I'm going to put here, just assume the code has reached this point. Not set directly like this. I'll do that there. And I'm going to copy that there and paste it here. So now what this does is this will align with the code to the next page basically so this is saying move up until 
you reach the next round number at this point. So this will move the program counter to the next Uh, <laughs> every function in a different page to be sure to be honest quite often you don't need to do that but there are some times when you, you are doing um, critical stuff where it, where it really does matter uh, so in this case this would move it up to 110 so now these addresses are like this Now the branch does not cross a boundary. I've never done so many comments in my life in my life and so it takes three cycles. So this is this is why it's important to kind of under so when you're doing uh, when you're trying to optimized code it's important to um to, to know where you uh where you are in the code uh yeah and as as uh, andy says uh how do i know where my code is at typing this will show the address in kick ASM outputs. You can also do like so, there we go. Hi Archibald, welcome to the stream. Okay, so with that in mind, um, you just remember that applies to all indexed addressing. Uh, one other thing to bear in mind as well, um, crossing a zero page boundary. So if you've got something like this and you want to do indexing always reads from zero page dig all these comments yeah thanks steps um, zero page indexing will always read from the zero page. You can't use a zero page index to read something outside of zero page. So in this case, we are not reading ff plus o2 equals 101, but we'll actually read zero one the value just wraps in zero page so it's important to know that as well um, if you do anything in zero page you're always going to be doing something in zero page um, same applies to indirect indexed addressing as well um, which I'll get into in a minute when you do the zero page with X <laughs> Thanks for the bits, Steps. Thanks for the bits, Richmond Mike. And thanks for the bits, Andy Magic Knight. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Uh, There's going to be a lot of stuff for you guys to read in here. So uh, uh, hopefully this is quite useful. So let's say do zero page X index addressing. So what is this one? So as I said, with zero page X index indirect addressing, the indexing happens before the indirection. So if I do uh, zero two and I do uh, a lookup at one zero comma x, um, 
this will add the X register to the given zero page address. For looking up the value with indirection. In this case, we look at one zero plus zero two. It's one two zero page address one two. Contains two zero four eight. It's an Indian, and so the so accumulator is set to contents of two zero four eight, which equals FF. You can use by yeah bits are one cent tips yeah pretty much. Although they're one cent tips that you give half to Twitch and half half to me as well. Twitch are a bit greedy with that, but it's fine. I'm not in it for the bits. I'm in it to teach people. The bits is just a nice thing that pays for the wine, basically. Um, okay, so that's what indirects. So it's zero page X index indirect um, is about. It's about applying the X register to the zero page address first and then using that address, calculated address, to do the lookup. Now, notice the comma X is inside the brackets. It's inside the brackets because you need to calculate this first. This is still this is still just the number, and everything else is the the opcode and addressing mode. But this is saying before you do the indirection, which is the brackets, apply the x. Oops, apply the x to to here. That is not indirect addressing. This is the same as, and this is why I say use square brackets because you can use you can use um, normal parentheses, but you should use square ones instead. Um, so you you can spot kind of errors like this. Um, the pro well the problem is is this is a hard one to spot. You need to know that this addressing mode is written like this, not like this. This will just, because this isn't an actual addressing mode, the indirect and then X, X addressing, it's just going to treat this as a, as a calculation. It's going to say, okay, don't need the brackets here, that is the value, and it becomes the same as that. <coughs> so that is a, a, one reason you might do this, um, might be for. Uh, let's think what's a good explanation for doing this. Um, uh, sound registers would be a good one. Uh, so you might have In your hex view, you might have. Uh, I can't remember the bloody sound registers now. Hang on. Uh, let's have a look at um, control registers. So the control register at zero. Oops. Zero four. D four. And then the other control registers are at. Uh, D four zero B It's very situational this this thing. And say you wanted to um, 
you wanted to set the uh, control register for all three voices you might do it something like this uh, so let's get a control value uh, so you'd want a voice on um, rectangle waveform so immediate mode four, five, mm -hmm. and you could store that at one zero comma x I mean you wouldn't you probably wouldn't do it for this but this would explain how you could you could use this and that's going to set it for all three of three of those registers it's more useful if your your setting values um, at specific points in memory um, or you want to grab um, like a lookup lookup table it's it's very situational I don't use it very often I think I've used it maybe once or twice in all the time I've been doing it it, it does have its applications but um, yeah it's definitely the the least used mode um, of indexing absolutely um, I, I don't even think I don't even think this is a good example so I'm just gonna write a bad example here but I mean it shows how it would work but um, yeah I'm, I'm trying to think of a I'm trying to think of the reason I used it recently I've definitely used it recently and I cannot for the life of me think why uh, it might even be in lunar code actually let me I just want to check actually if I did do it in lunar I have a funny feeling I did you know uh, let's have a look uh, let's make a Halloween game there we go so let's have a look see if we can find it in here uh, hmm, how am I gonna find it in here actually uh, who knows maybe it's there no uh, let's try comma X for space I can't remember where I used it. Uh, I mean, I would have thought it would have been like that, but apparently not. Maybe it wasn't Luna. I definitely used it in something. Um, I'm trying to think of what I might have used it for. I think I've seen it in sprite multiplexes as well before now. I think I've seen people using it as a way to kind of to cycle through the X and Ys for various sprites as well. Um, yeah, uh, honestly, it's, it's it is as Andy says, it's one of the the least used uh, modes of indexing. It doesn't have very many good use cases. Um, honestly, you could probably write a hundred games and never use this and you know it wouldn't have any impact on um, on the quality of your games you're not missing out by by uh, by not using it um, I think that's it for addressing modes let me just double check uh, so we've done implied we've done immediate zero page Zero page X, zero page Y, indirect zero page X, indirect zero page Y. Absolute, absolute X, absolute. Yeah, we've done them all. Okay, cool. Um, in that case, let's have a look at some directives. We've got about half an hour or so, so. Uh, So we already did the four stuff, so I'm going to go and grab that from wherever I put it. can't remember where I put it. Here we go. I'm just going to copy that into there. So we've already explained you can use for loops to, um, to create um, uh, to, to create kind of unrolled code basically um, with, with easy calculatable increments like that. You can use it for other things as well. Um, 
but this is, I mean, you could do, for instance, uh, I'm not going to leave this in here, but you could just do stupid things like this. I mean, why you would want to do this, I don't know, but it's not just limited to using calculations. You could just do something like that, and that will just paste this 200 times into the code. I mean, you wouldn't do that. You would do it in a loop or something, but you, if you really wanted to, you could. Um, so, uh, bytes and words. Okay, so... So the byte instruction allows you to just inject some numbers into memory at the location that you're at. So uh, again, these can take any format you want. I tend to use hexadecimal for these. Um, inserts bytes into memory. Uh, you can use calculations in here as well. So you don't just have to use hard numbers. Again, these are numbers. Every, each one of these are just numbers, so if you wanted to, you could do um, times 3 uh, divided by 2 minus, you know, you, you can mix and match, mix and match calculations and number bases. Note that there is no hash in here anywhere. Um, that's because the hash is an addressing mode thing. These are directives. Directives don't need to have an addressing mode. They, they kind of the directive itself tells you what what format you're going to need. Um, I'm going to put brackets around these as well, just so you can see. You can use brackets anywhere you want. Um, Yeah, and you don't need the zero as well. So I've said here you can mix and match number bases. So yeah, you could do something like that. Yeah, let's do, do it like that. Um, you can basically put what you want in there. Uh, words um, basically allow you to put 16-bit values in. Um, it works exactly like bytes. Um, and this will store 16-bit values in little endian format in memory again can mix and match calculations and number bases <laughs> words don't mean <laughs> yeah Um, there is also, uh, I think it's D word, I think, uh, let me just check, I th think, I'm right in thinking D word is, uh, big endian format. Uh, let me just make sure that it does do that. If anybody can correct me before I find it, then... I'm pretty sure it does allow you to do a uh, big, big endian format. Uh, D word, double word. Oh no, D word is. Wait a minute. D word is double word, sorry. So double word will allow you to do really big numbers, like so. Also, there's one to do, I'm pretty sure there was one to do big endian format as well, but maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, okay, whatever. I never use D word, it's not something I've ever needed. I always store my numbers in little endian, so even if that was doing big endian, which it's not, it's doing double words. Um, then I would never have used it anyway, which is why I don't remember what it did. Um, okay, so fills. You might want to store several bytes following a pattern. So you could do 
a for loop here. So you could do for var i equals zero, i is less than 25, i plus plus, and then you could do byte, uh, you know, i times, uh, let's just do 10, i, time, I, I times 10. However, it's neater to use a fill. Now it's doing exactly the same thing, but it's just a little bit neater to use. Uh, you can also do, uh, I think you can do fill word as well. Um, yeah. Works with words. Oh, this must be new because it's not it's not shown up. Uh, I'm going to leave it in. It is supported in Kickassembler. I must need to update the. Uh, uh, can you do that by amount one? Yep, you can use labels as well. Oh yeah, I'll put that in here as well. Vars and labels. Uh, so fill word will allow you to do the same thing with words as well. So you might have um, uh, so this will store stores pairs of uh, stores. I don't think there is a fill D word. I don't see it in the list anywhere. Um, but I'll leave that one in anyway. Uh, Added in point one one. Yeah, I probably need to update my um, my plugin. It's probably it will probably compile, but I'm just not getting the highlighting because um, the compile the the assembler and the um, and the plugin are separate. That's the F word. Um, there is also. Uh, oh, okay. Let's do. Um, grabbing that SP and MC. We touched on this before, but you might want to do something like. Um, Screen addresses And I believe in one of the new versions, you can uh, matching LSB and MSB tables using uh, what's it called now? I forget. Low high fill. So you can do low high fill, which I also don't have set, uh, and you can do this like. Um, creates the same two tables from above. A table of LSB values followed by a table of MSB values. Yeah, I actually told me that before. Yeah, I, I know that because I know one of my favourite things is... I think it's spelt like 
that, I think. Uh, I think it's spelled like that. Which is a salmon soup and it's delicious. It's like salmon, dill and um, potatoes and leek or something, I think. I can't remember exactly what's in it, but it's absolutely delicious. Um, probably my favourite Finnish food, actually, out of everything. Okay, what else might you need directive-wise? Uh, we've done bite, we've done fill. Oh, <coughs> so one common thing you might need as well is... Uh, text. Um, so you can use, oh hang on, what's that? I've got a message of some kind. Uh, oh, it's from ages ago. Andy telling me the stream has died. Yeah, I don't want to know that kind of thing. I was very disappointed in the, in the lack of snow. need to look at the way this is encoded now as well so I think the default is which is the default well this will be one two three four five six into memory you can change the encoding using uh, dot encoding and then upper, and there is screen code mixed. And upper. And what this does is this changes the mapping of these values to the numbers um, so this lets you kind of use different um, text encoding schemes uh, I'm trying to think is there anything else that's probably useful um, nothing that's really because I just want to kind of go over how things are laid out in memory really so um, I don't think going over things like uh, CPU opcode probably don't need that either. Um, uh, oh yes, that's the other thing as well. I put that in because I do use that as well. Um, um, use because zero that at is the symbol zero so if you um i do yeah i've done, kind of done it both ways I've, I've done it like that you can also um you can also do this as well i think if you do hang on let me check some i just i need to check this in a different window because i don't really want you guys to see uh, let me do it let me just open just open a random folder for now. And do it over here because I just need to check something. It's top secret. Uh, but I was doing it in here, so uh, let me see where was it? It would be in here, here. Okay. Then it is in here, I believe. No, I've moved it. I'm gonna. Oh god, where did I put it now? Put it in here. There we go. Ah, yeah, that's right. Okay. So if you proceed with an at symbol there, you can then do uh, things like that.
So if you put that at the beginning, you can use inline hex values as well. Um, which is handy if you've got stuff that isn't in the normal character set and you just want to kind of, you might have a, a character that's kind of not in the normal character set. So you might want to put a specific bite in somewhere or, or kind of end of string markers or, you know, new line markers, things like that. Um, so that's a handy one to know. Um, I think that's about it really. I mean, we've covered pretty much everything you would need addressing mode wise and for storing data. Uh, color changes. What do you mean? Color? Oh, you mean in the text? Yeah, it could be. You could use it for color, color, uh, color changes as well. Um, so the the reason I'm using this in the the project I'm doing is that I use it as a end of string marker um, because zero is used for something else, um, and I use it for new line markers. So for I've got multi multi line text fields. Um, oh yeah, you mean the color? Oh uh, yeah, okay. Um, right, let's go through putting them in. Oh my god, let's see if I can remember them all now. So we've got black, we've got white, we've got red uh, we've got cyan and we've got uh, what's number four purple and we've got green blue yellow and then it's orange brown now is it called D gray, maybe? No, no. Yeah, there we go, dark gray. I mean, the thing is, I just, because I know these colors, it's just easier for me to, uh, mid gray, I don't know what it's called. Color constants. Uh, mm -mm -mm. I don't know what this one's called. Light gray. What's the middle one? Is it just gray? Maybe the middle one. Maybe it is. Yeah, there we go. Uh, then you've got uh, orange, brown, dark gray, gray. So this would be light green. Uh, and then you've got light blue, and then you've got light grey. Cool. Worth mentioning macro function. Uh, no, I think that's kind of another, I think that's something on its own, that really. Um, there, that's kind of a whole topic on in, it, in itself, I think, as I, I don't want to get into that too much right now. Um, just having a look through the manual, see if I can see anything. Oh, um, assemble time outputs. So you can use dot print. Um, I would recommend putting brackets around this so that you can do things like, um, Uh, so you might want to know, you know, you could use keep doing it with one D. Uh, 
um, yeah there you go so you might you might want to do uh, print out the current address like that um, you can also print out the value of um, labels and vars what you can't do uh, so you can print out labels vars loop iterators but not accumulator x y or memory contents as this is uh, assemble time only so you might be able to do something like this Pink. Oh, I did, didn't I? Hang on. Uh, no, it's, it's brown. I don't think it's called pink. Wait, hang on. Oh, no, you're right. It's light red, actually. There we go. Yeah, you're right. I missed it. Light red. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so print's a useful one. Uh, I think that's about it. I, I, I mean, we could go on and on going through every single thing in Kick Assembler, but we'll do some more um, stuff like this. Uh, we'll do we'll we'll do function uh, and macro in another one. I'd like to do. I think the next one I, I want to look at is. Um, um well, well we'll do the loader next time we'll do the cart loader stuff but then i'd probably like to look at um uh, arithmetic stuff so how to do various arithmetics and stuff uh what's the news of your fighting game i've actually just got back to it today i've, I've not touched any code for like uh two weeks so i just got back onto it today it's been delayed a little bit because i've not been feeling very well um, I'm in the process of putting the special moves in at the moment, so I've been trying to work out how to make it feel good on here when you do, you know, on the joystick when you do kind of, um, uh, you know, like Street Fighter moves. So I've been work working on that a bit today. Um, it's coming along well. I mean, it's 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 going well. It's not that far from being complete. I just need to uh, implement the special move animations. Um, and update the AI to use use it, but yeah, yeah, it is still going. I will post an, once I get the special moves in. I will post a a video showing some of them off a little bit, so you can see see how they look. But yeah, I I really haven't felt well the past the past two weeks, so I've been kind of just dialing back on it a little bit, doing a doing a little bit here and there um, on on another project that's kind of. A, a bit more critical um and then today I, I got back into into doing the fighting game again so it will it will come eventually um it's just a bit delayed as everything has been at the moment um, but i'm feeling pretty good today actually i don't feel too bad i've had a few little stomach pains here and there but nothing nothing like i had last week um so that's good cool um okay that's about it for tonight then guys i i will post all this code up onto uh, GitHub. Bear in mind that none of this is going to run. Um, I'm pretty sure if you try and compile this, it's just going to do. In fact, let's give it a try and see what happens. Yeah, it's not going to do anything. Um, but it's valid code. I mean, that one was anyway. That one was as well. So it's not for running. It's it's this is just code that you can look through, uh, pick a pick a kind of topic you're interested in, have a look through it. Um, hopefully the comments are good enough that you can pull out some good information on there um, and I'll share this I'll share this on github right after this and I will do a trimmed version of the video for um, for YouTube in the next coming days that's the other thing I need to catch up with as well I've not I've not done any YouTube videos for a while 
Uh, let's go and raid Simon WGB. Cool, let's go and raid him. Uh, let me bring up my little control panel. Was that the right control panel? It was. <laughs> Luna 2. That's not a bad idea. It would be good to do another version. Uh, thank you for the bits. Uh, cheers, Wicked. Um, yeah, you never know, actually. You really do like Luna, so maybe it would be uh, it'd be an interesting uh, challenge to make a, an upgraded version of it somehow. Okay, guys. Um, I'll be online on Saturday. We'll carry on the game. I'm really uh, enjoying the progress on the game, so I might do a kind of slightly dial back wine drinking session for that again uh, i'll still drink a bottle i might start on a second but i'm not going to finish too um and we'll see how far we can get in the game i, I kind of want to change the uh, the screen shake to be i think for i suggested it to for it to just kind of drop down instead of left and right so um cool all right let's go and raid simon wgb and i'll see you guys on saturday take care guys